July the 19th, 2021. Guys, um, everyone's asked about an update on these returning sunspots. Let's go back to the 15th a moment, uh, just a few days ago. We did a video about this very large coronal mass ejection. It came from this bottom corner of the sun. That's important as we go through the video. It's not going to be long, but I'll try to make it informative. Then uh, just a few days later, from the another section of the sun, we saw this on the 17th, another coronal mass ejection. Again, two different areas of the sun, and now both of those are turning earth-facing. They're just coming around the edge right now, and they're going to have about two weeks from left to right as they uh, traverse across the sun, or the sun rotates around earth-facing. Now, this is stereo A. It's giving us the side view, not the front view that we're looking at from the Earth satellites like SOHO and, LAS uh, Soho and SDO, but this stereo A. And what it's showing is some of the big sunspots that are on the back side of the sun that are just turning. The left side has just turned away from Earth. And on the right side of this, you're going to see the two sunspot areas that we're going to have to be dealing with right there and the one above it, guys. The Earth is to the right. This is important. This is today's date. This is a graph of the inner circles, uh, inner solar system. Earth is there facing the sun in the center yellow dot. Stereo A, the satellite we just looked at, is more to the left. It's in Earth's orbit, but behind it. And so you, from there, you get a view across this section of the sun. And then if you're looking at SOHO or the SDO, you're getting this front side of the sun, just so you understand. Now, remember, Mercury is in the gray dot to the right. Venus is in a gray dot to the left on the back side of the sun. Notice how close Mercury is, and we'll take a closer look at that. Now, this is going back to an Earth-facing satellite called the Solar Dynamics Observatory. All of these are linked on our website at bpearthwatch.com. So we're back to Earth-facing images, and this is what's coming around this eastern limb, both the southern, southeastern limb and the northeastern limb. Check that out. We're starting, and we're seeing some sunspot activity already. But again, now we're looking directly at it. So just to keep a perspective, you can use both of those satellites as a tool of what's coming. Again, this is Earth-facing images, and you can see a flare in the top section of that area. Now, this is kind of a, this is also SDO. Uh, it's called the uh, Colorized Magnetogram. And there's the sunspot coming around the top. Now, what's important, that sunspot's coming around the top section. It's called was called 2838 when it went around the sun. They changed numbers. Now it's back. And that's the one that gave us the X flare. Remember the video from about two weeks ago? And it was the first X flare of this solar cycle, 25. Well, it's made that 14-day journey, journey around behind the uh, sun. And this is what we just saw on the magnetogram. Again, this one gave us the first X flare of this uh, solar cycle 25. Going back to this chart, just a moment. I'm just going to give you a little speculation from years of observing these things. Mercury is here. Earth is in the green dot. Venus is here. Where have the sunspots been the most powerful on the back side? Look how close Mercury on the right is to the sun, and it's in its closest approach to the sun because it's not a perfect circle orbit. Notice where it's at now compared, if it was on the other side of the sun, it's much closer. And with the solar cycle 25 kicking up, we're seeing Earth shields strengthen slightly because that's how it happens, and magnetism, electromagnetism increases. So the same thing with Mercury and Venus. And with their closer proximity to the sun, We've seen these plasma tube connections between the sun and the earth called the earth-sun connectivity point. All the planets have that, Mercury, Venus, Mars. And by the way, Mars is also on the backside, and it was lined up with Venus not too long ago. But this magnetism that's increasing, that's being produced from our sun, energi uh, energizing our shields, could be part of the reason those backside flares were so strong. That connectivity point, their charge is opposite of the sun's. And you see that when we have a comet come close to the sun, these large corona mass ejections that blow out as the sun is recognized uh, the 
or recognizing the fact that these opposite charges are getting closer together. It's just an arc, just like if you're walking across carpet in dry humidity and touch that doorknob and you get that spark. Same thing happens in our solar system. It's an electric solar system, okay? That's how it, all of this works. So my point is, will these sunspots come down as they come around on the Earth side of the sun? We're not sure yet, but uh, that could be that could have a lot to do with it if it comes down simply because the earth is further away from the sun not as closely connected mag uh, magnetically and therefore they may back down now i'm not sure yet and i don't want you to take your guard down but that may be the reason we had all of this arcing on the back side of the sun i've seen mercury do it before guys because it's so close to the sun and uh, they will react together I, we're watching it. I had a lot of questions about uh, what was going to happen or, or when were these sunspots on the backside going to come up around Earth facing, and it's starting now. Just wanted to let you know we're working on part three of uh, The Great Comet, and Tina from uh, Tina's Country Kitchen has got a couple of surprises for all of y'all tomorrow morning, and, and they should be up early. But uh, just stay tuned for that. I think you're going to enjoy those newer recipes that are coming out. But we're watching it. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.